Hell, Utah. This is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiz. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am your host, Caleb. I'm your other host, Joe. And today we're going to be covering yet another, yet another. How many more of these do we have? Uh, like, like three more after this one, I think. Yet another. Yeah. Yet another. Yet another. Yet another. We're, we're going to be another. Re- going over a yet another uh-huh. today. Yet another uh, um, episode excited. of okay. blah blah blah. This one is <laughs> Nanaki's. So we get Red Thirteen story in between Final Fantasy VII and the beloved Advent Children. The beloved, yes. The beloved by some, I would argue. Loved by many, hated by some. I would say. Okay, all right. Mixed reviews. Mixed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mixed reviews. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, we'll be doing that uh, cour- courtesy of the. The what was it two years ago the winner of the uh, best non UFF podcast for the livestream dot net yeah I do believe yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. so uh, kudos to those guys for their excellent job translating this thing and getting those voice actors put together and uh, oh, fighting wow. the guy with the biggest balls in the industry to introduce their show every time the livestream dot net <laughs> presents. <laughs> Purpose on the world with this boy. Sounds like the uh, singer to Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. <laughs> Episode <laughs> no, no, <okay. laughs> So, uh, kudos to that guy <laughs> and the uh, extra poochy crotch region of his jeans that uh, has to custom made for yeah. those fucking balls. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I like uh, I like the way they put music together. It's overall like a, a really solid um, kind of uh, production, yeah, uh, yeah. especially this episode, which uh, yeah, I, I yeah, we'll get we'll get into it. Um, Schweiss. They can find us at uh, ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can uh, support the show if you want to by clicking through the Patreon link there or through the Amazon link as well. Or there's a PayPal link if you want to do it that way. You can tweet me at Joseph Vigolier. Me at UFF Podcast. Guys, if you're not going to get the $200 version of FF12, why not order it through Amazon through our link? <laughs> yeah. Hook us up. That's a good point. That's a good point. They got the collector's edition steel book. Looks great. Wonderful. It's wonderful. It's the yeah. best. Wow. It's the best. It's at least second Tremendous. best. But, uh, but yes. <laughs> they can, uh, you guys can follow us at facebook.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Uh, and you can watch us do the episodes live every Saturday, or almost every Saturday, at uh, twitch.tv slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Uh, where are you, Schweiss, in Lightning Returns? I am, I think I'm on day two of Lightning Returns. Uh, that I don't really know what that means yet. Um, day I, two out of I I think it's out of you, it's out of thirteen. Oh I'm my god! Sure. What? Yeah. What? Surprise! Surprise! Oh, that's that's such a coincidence. I know. Like there, it's it is a thirteen game. I would I wouldn't be well, and it's a thirteen day thing. Oh shit! Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't do like what's thirteen times three? Sixty six. Uh, thirty nine. Thirty nine. Wait, thirteen times three is not thirty nine. That is. Wait, hold on. It is 39. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> 63. <laughs> yeah, 39 Fuck days. Fuck this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase this episode. <laughs> so Captured in time. Myself the embarrassment. Captured in time. <laughs> Twitch knows. I got to use the paper and the pen, man. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, am shit. I fucking <laughs> yes. Am I fucking yep. Okay, oh! thank you. Thank you. Uh, 39. I'm surprised it's not 39. Yeah. yeah. They did mention a uh, 500 year gap, so they're breaking all sorts of Final Fantasy trends. Mm. No thousand years, it's 500 instead. Um, but it's all right. It's it's got a it's got a very weird battle system. So it's, they they ixnade the old battle system. Yeah, it's uh, very active. Um, you have like different assignments. You have different classes that you can build, um, like almost your own paradigms. But you can attach abilities to certain classes. Um, like you have attack. There's one for guard. You can like defend in real time and block. Uh, and there's a. Does lightning start at level zero? 
Um, I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know what the leveling system is yet. I'm just okay. fighting things All right. and trying to fight against the clock because it's your enemy. Obviously, with my question, I haven't played any Lightning Returns. Yeah. The only video game I played this week was a game for Nude Clan, uh, Zestiria, Tales of Zestiria. Yeah, we're pretty busy with that game. I uh, I only, uh, only last minute decided to do a Saturday morning stream of Final Fantasy XIII 2, and it's because I... 13-3. 13-3, sorry. You know, it's because I'm kind of embarrassed to not play it. Because, you know, it's, we didn't play it last week, and then to not right. play it this week would be right. like... Two weeks. I understand, that. but uh, there is something that you did recently with Final Fantasy. Yeah, you should probably announce. So, I am quitting the show. No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. I uh, I bought <laughs> I I, oh. I platinum Final Fantasy thirteen two, and uh, yeah, well, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. It only took me like fifty nine hours, fifty eight or fifty nine hours, which is around the higher end of the average I was seeing on on my trusty PlayStation boards forum or whatever. And um, I, it wasn't super hard. There were a few times that I turned easy mode on because uh, the game, the guide recommended it. Like for the final boss fight, I turned easy mode on one of the times. And then when I went back to do, when I had all of the cutscenes, every fragment finally done and I was going to go get the secret ending, I did it on normal. And dude, it, it was so fucking easy like i i he i just staggered him one time and i was able to kill him just melted yeah it was ridiculous like no he didn't do any moves he just like to max out all your shit by 59 hours in is already like an accomplishment the fact that you platinum the game was crazy yeah it's a lot easier than uh than 13 was there's there are these super enemies you can fight on the uh, the Arcolite Step or whatever the fuck that is, it's all weirdly worded, yeah, lettered. Uh, you can find the Long Gui. You can fight an Ochu monster, Long and then Gui. there's a a couple other ones that are like legendary fights, and those give you thirty thousand CP each. Um, that gave me a lot, but then also just running around and killing one monster for the Beastary, I had to get one kill of everything in the game to uh, get one of the fragments, and that was just giving me tons of CP. Because, like, sometimes they just don't spawn. Like, it just takes forever. And I try to run away, but then if I don't run away, I'll just I'll just kill whatever it is. And sometimes the fucking enemies, even though they're, like, tiny little weaklings, they'll, they'll chase me relentlessly, and I can't escape. And I'm like, God, I don't want you. But, uh, it's, you know, you get a lot of CP. Are you going to Platinum Lightning Returns? <sighs> yeah, I think I'm going to... It's supposed to take multiple playthroughs, isn't it? Yeah. I think I'm gonna try. Okay. It's only it's supposed to be around the same forty to sixty hours as uh, thirteen oh, two. Good. So that's not good. That many hours as far as platinum goes, and then that also means the game will be a twenty hour game to beat. So that, yeah, there's that. Yeah. So it might seem like we're behind, but remember we did this with thirteen two as well. <laughs> we didn't start it, <laughs> and then we started it, and then beat the shit out of it, and then reviewed it. So. Here we are. It might happen again. Who knows? Or we might be doing episode blah, blah, blah next week as well. Yeah. Uh, will next week. probably be the case. Anyway. I think next week we might we might be able to get Bandramon actually for a Patreon invite finally. Well, he's all busy with his, his shows now, isn't he? He is, yeah. He uh, doesn't have time for us uppers anymore. Fine. Fine, Bandramon. But uh, he did say tentatively next weekend for recording his patreon invite so okay well we'll have to figure that out yeah i hope it happens uh it's been a while since we had a stump the joe uh, segment so you know oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna pull out all the stops get the bullshit oh, questions oh god all right let's uh let's get to some news schweiss news news Okay, an update for all of you World of Final Fantasy players out there. March 23rd is going to be the release of the patch 1.03 alongside the free champion summon Ball Fear DLC. That's right. Um, here are the changes that they have noted on the website here. This is gamatsu.com. Great, great website. The best. Skip function for battle scenes added. Press the circle button to skip summon scenes, uh, such as Mega Mirage summons and Champion summoners or summons. So that sounds like a uh, kind of like an FF10 thing where you can make it a shortened version. Why does it take Square to be forever? like, oh, 
should we allow players to skip this stuff? I yeah, you know, it's really <laughs> cool in the beginning. And when I was playing ten for the show, I was like, you know, what? I think I'm gonna leave it on the long summons. I like them. And then after about oh four hours, I was like, I I can't anymore. This is it's like a minute every time, and I, it's already gonna take God, me hundred hours. So uh, I would say with cutscenes, like when they finally decided that you could skip cutscenes, yeah, in twelve. 12 I know, it's like, Ooh. oh, thank God. It's like, I don't think I could take that Seymour yeah. cutscene again. Yeah, or the Lady <laughs> Unaleska this last time. God, she was brutal. Like, I would, <laughs> all I try to do is cure my people, and she does mega death on them, and if they don't have doom, they all die. So, like, fuck. Then then I have to watch the 20 minutes again. Well, it's, mega death does do some face melting stuff. So. That, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be damned. You gotta be damned to live through mega death. <laughs> Uh, there's a fast forward setting added to the settings menu, which enables oh, fast forward God. for battles and events. Oh Jesus! Battle response improvements. I guess the ATB bar fill conditions for standard encounters has improved, and you can input commands quicker than before. So when we finally get to this game, we'll be able to cheat through it. Uh, yeah, we'll be able to play it very quickly. <laughs> That's what that sounds like to me. Sephiroth. Oh, can I press the fast forward button to get this <laughs> yeah. review done next week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, FF12, uh, yeah, the Zodiac Edition is going to have that fast forward too, so it's going to be nice. Wow. Sephiroth, Balthier, and Sora added to the background music settings. Um, Random added to the background music. Don't know what that is. HP and AP recovers at gates, save points, and when each chapter saves. So they're so bringing back the. This game will be much easier. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be Final Fantasy X. To twelve, you should have the, heard uh, heard Craig in the background saying, "It's already fucking easy, <laughs> dude." So I know Final Fantasy uh, Mobius is not as big of a deal as Brave Exvius, but Final Fantasy Fifteen is coming to Final Fantasy Mobius. So uh, people who log in to Mobius Final Fantasy up until March thirty first will be able to enjoy some Final Fantasy Fifteen content. A 15-day event is has begun, giving people a chance to collect ability cards inspired by characters from 15. Now, I downloaded Mobius, but I never actually played it, so none of that means anything to me. Mm, yes. Uh, but the big piece of news here, Final Fantasy 15 DLC episode Gladiolus has a trailer. Oh, shit. Yeah, and uh, we are going to watch said trailer. Let us do that. Right. Fuck it. Right. Now. <laughs> yeah, now. No. How about right now? But for real, let's do it. Okay. First time we've had a DLC um, for 15, at least. You come to prove yourself worthy of my mantle. I do. I am here to undertake the trial of Gilgamesh. Ravis is in it? Means the High Commander and get my ass handed to me. Couldn't stand a chance, and I never will unless I get more power. Gilgamesh awaits challengers in the deepest recesses of those ruins, ready to face death. You know what? Oh, shit. God damn it. You're going to buy that? I hate the idea of DLC, but... 
does it look pretty cool. It is the how ul- much is the season pass? It's like twenty bucks. Oh, okay, that's not that bad. <laughs> it's the uh, the ultimate DLC experience, is what it is. God damn it, dude! That um, was a good trailer. I, 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 I you saw. There's obviously some sort of plot line with Gladiolus. It looks like you're playing him yeah. in this. And um, yeah, I think it's the section where he takes new off new areas, while. and there's like some cool creatures, and it might be a lot of fun. Yeah, and he fights Gilgamesh. So yeah, can't wait to sweet. not review that for that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> why not? Sure. We can do all of them as one episode. Uh, God, episode. Uh, yeah, when they're finally done in two years with all the DLC, we just uh, do. I don't know. I think it's it's gonna be sooner than that. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, Craig, I brought you over here. Um, if you guys heard me clapping and snapping earlier, it was because I was trying to get Caleb's uh, dumb attention. My dumb attention? Yeah. Like, you were talking to me, and then I started gesturing towards you, and you turned your head and looked at your phone and was just, like, zoned out. What? What? He's trying to... So, you played World of Final Fantasy. Yeah. Okay. Did you beat it or just played? I beat it. You beat it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Did we talk about this before? I think we did, yeah. All right, so you beat World of Final Fantasy. What do you think about those new changes? <sighs> the game was already super easy. Like, you could let a four-year-old just run rampant, and they could beat well, it. Well, I figured as much when like, you said you finished it, but... <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> But, like, seriously, it was uh, way too easy. And, like, I... Uh, I but now you can fast forward <laughs> through it. Yeah, that's, like, okay, I guess. <laughs> but there's already, like, a fast forward mode. Like, I, I don't know what more speed you need in the game. <laughs> well, always more speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I didn't really even use the summons in the game because they're kind of... Unless you try to like specifically make them stronger, they're not very good. Yeah, they they just aren't as good as your normal dudes with their their attacks and abilities. So it's not really worth it to summon them anyway. So I don't I don't really understand the the speed boost on the uh, on the summon function. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fair. All right. Well, we got your opinion on that. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Yeah, you can yeah. stick around if you want. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so is that it for news twice? Yeah, a very light news week. I, I, DLC? I, I bought the uh, <coughs> I bought the two hundred dollar edition of Final Fantasy twelve. I pre ordered that. Um, it looks pretty the, sweet, uh, but it's expensive. Do you only get one little figure, or do no? You get, you get all, all of them. Oh well, that's not too bad then. I thought they was. I thought they were gonna pull like some. You get one. You get a random. No, you one. get you get all uh, the judges. Yeah, yeah, you do. Um, Honestly, if I were Square Enix, if I wanted to make some money off of some hardcore fans, it'd be like, there's six editions you can buy. (laughs) Yeah, you know, they had that for the uh, special edition to the FF12 guide, actually. Mine has, like, on on the cover of my guide, it has both here, but um, Jake actually got one that was Bosch. There's one for each of the main characters. Uh, so you can't see it until you... There will be super fans out there that will decide to collect them all. Yeah. You can't see it until you buy it and open it because the outside oh, cover doesn't evil. have it. It's the that's inside. evil. It's the inside-outside cover that has it. So, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. I, uh... Uh, dude, honestly, that DLC trailer is making me rethink rethink what you were saying earlier yeah but it's ah, it's pissing me off i I hate it still i hate it still yeah well well, he hates the idea of dlc for a final fantasy game now i think 13 2 does it does it pretty well where it's just extra stuff it's not this stuff is this is all extra stuff too but this is like extra story content and that's where it's like hmm i don't know i don't know i feel about that now they did say the story is uh the episode's supposed to be around two to three hours, so I'm guessing one to two, in all honesty. So I mean, so it's, it's like <laughs> one dungeon. You mean thirty minutes? Yeah, if it's yeah thirty thirty to forty five minutes. Wasn't, uh, it, wasn't the game's main story was supposed to take like eighty hours or something? What was the time? It was some sick time that they told us, and it was bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it's complete bullshit. I mean, I did it in a hundred hours, and I did almost everything in the game and i beat it twice or that there was a so. there was a boss that was supposed to take multiple days and it does in game it does take multiple Is days the, yeah the adamantium it did in take me game. it did take that me was a, a trick day. it was a fucking trick <laughs> yeah. to say hey 
this boss is going to be sick. But right. It wasn't really that sick, and the camera was ridiculous. Yeah, it was It was not well so. done, I don't think, for that. But, no. um, yeah, I, I'm excited to get into the get into the DLC of this game. I, I haven't done it yet, though. I mean, we've had these timed events. There were a couple timed beasts that you could go out and fight if you timed quests, and... I I just didn't put it put the game in my PS4 and load it up for those. I I just didn't have time. Like I I'm too busy with 132 and now with uh with Lightning Returns and Tales of Zestiria for Nude Clan. I just And and it, honestly the poll isn't really there. They did increase the max level, which is MMOE, right? It's yeah, one, level 120 bit. is what the max level is it's now. A, it's a break against tradition with the level 99 thing. Kind of. I mean, FF10 didn't have level 99. So, I mean, I guess it's sort of how you look at it. Um, 13 doesn't have levels we'll either. 13.2 yeah. does. 13.2 has level 99. Yeah, it does. So, I don't know. It's fine, but uh, I was really looking forward to the time quests and the time hunts, and then I just didn't. I just didn't do them. Oh my god! So I, I, I don't know why. I, just, <laughs> I think it's I, I think it's because I put I put my hundred hours into it, and I feel fulfilled for now. But I am excited for the DLC. Are you gonna wait till all the DLC is out to return? No, I'll probably play it when it comes out. Since I'll I have the season pass, so I mean I might I as well. It. Yeah, might as well. Might as well jump into it. So well, we might as well jump into what was it? On the way to a smile, episode Nanaki. Yes. All right. God damn it, dude. Hey guys, our uh, guy Rucksack. Thank you for sticking and around. Dominic Maz. We Dominic are Dominic Maz, who doesn't like us not commenting on the comments. Um, yeah, it's a podcast first and foremost. This is just extra. It's extra. Enjoy it. We we'll do read them as they go by. It's true. There's an occasional glance down at the camera <laughs> or the monitor. So, we know you're there. We can feel you now. Yeah. We'll just I, ignore you. You know what? I'm going to actually pull up a clip, and we're going to start this off with the uh, episode. Oh, I'll, I'll just do that in post, dude. You sure? Yeah. I do that in post every time for these things. <coughs> All right. I mean, we could do it now, but if you want to do it later. Yeah, fine. I'll do it later so it blends easy. An entire think. Shrek movie without the main characters. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably awesome. Okay, there's a million. Okay. Rucksack. There is a there's a million things on YouTube that are Shrek based, and they're all like every time um, Shrek is seen, the movie speeds up by two, and like the movie the the video will be two and a half minutes long, so like the movie will start normally, and then every time something happens, it'll speed up or some other weird thing will happen. So there's like a million Shrek videos. There's a million like fucking <laughs> with Shrek. Videos. <laughs> I have never. I've, I'm not kidding you, and I've gone down the rabbit hole with them. Yeah. There, it's amazing. There was one that was uh, the entire Shrek movie in a minute, and I watched it, and I was able to remember everything just by watching <laughs> wow. the fucking like <laughs> flashes of the scenes. That's crazy. <laughs> I oh God, I can't remember what it was. I, I wanted to say that. Oh yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember what it was, but. Uh, it was it was really good. Okay. Uh, there's the one for Star Wars too. So like every time a laser blasts in Star Wars, the movie goes faster, huh, and wow. then like it's over in just a couple minutes. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's that. I guess it would be. Yeah, there's a lot of laser blasts in those fuckers. That's <laughs> those are crazy, man. Um, what is, there's there's one where like okay, I've gone down the rabbit hole because these are just types of videos. There's one where like the Rick Astley song like. His voice keeps going up, but the instruments keep going down. And it's like this, it hurts your brain. Like hearing it just slowly rise in pitch. And then like the instruments slowly lowering. Until, <laughs> and the they're fuck? like, ne they're never like on sync with each other. So they're like off tune from each other too as they're going. It's, it's real. Wow. And it is fucked. Dude, the internet is the greatest place in the world. Um. Uh... Uh, greatest place? Yeah. Is it so real to you that it's now a place? It is, yeah. Okay. You praise the Matrix so much. I mean, yeah, but the Matrix on. is great. The yeah. internet, that's that's a deep hole of, like, boredom. That's what that is. There's a lot of shit, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, that's okay. Fair. All right. Let's talk about this episode in a Yeah. I'll let you start. Three, two, one. 
On the way to a smile. Episode. <laughs> so this one starts out much like many of the other on the way to a smile. Depressing. Um, very. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, okay. Kind of sad. Um, Nanaki <laughs> decides that he wants to leave his village to obtain knowledge. He basically wants to go on another world tour. Is what I wrote here. Um, he he wants to go around and learn human empathy and just learn about uh, everything around him. Yeah, so he wants to learn about the world by going around the world and in my mind it was like this isn't new to him though. He's They've already, already done this. Yeah. He's already done this. He's already gone around the world and in fact helped save the world uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah, gone to pretty yeah, much yeah. every place you um, can go. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I have to leave now, and I'll go visit all the old friends in their haunts. And the stigma. Yeah. <laughs> stigma. Yeah. Uh, it, and that was something that was kind of odd to me. I was like, really? Like, you didn't get enough of that? But okay, he's, okay. He's going to go travel the world like Samuel L. Jackson at the end of uh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, he's just uh, he's a, a vagabond. He, doesn't, he wants to live. Wants to understand nature. I yeah. guess he wants to be like that guy in Master and Commander, the medic guy who goes around and like draws pictures of bugs and shit. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. He wants so, to be like that guy. So as he's walking away from his village, he, uh, he turns around. He turns around and he just feels something within his chest. And I have written down in my little notepad here, um, it's a chest burster from yeah. the Alien franchise. <laughs> we, we both, uh, and, both had that connection as and, we were listening to this thing. <laughs> and apparently, <laughs> apparently Nanaki has decided to call this chest burster Gilligan. Uh, yeah. He named it. He's like, well... I have this feeling deep down inside, and I'm gonna call it Gilligan from now on. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I, this is weird to me. Like, it, 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 what it ends up being is a uh, a deep seated like feeling of uh, you know remorse. Gilligan and, like, is his fear of loss. Is fear of loss. Yeah, it's. Uh, he, I thought it was an ulcer because he's <laughs> yeah an ulcer or a chest burster. Like it's just wriggling around on the he's, inside. Yeah, he he. <laughs> He calls it like a thing, like it has like form in his body and like it's creating a hole in his heart and it's yeah. ready to burst out. And that's when I was like, I made the little alien <laughs> chest burster motion yeah. on my <laughs> shirt. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's right. Chest and uh, he's feeling See, this because he metaphorical chest burster yeah. called Gilligan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. what, what was the uh, the metaphorical face hugger that impregnated him to get the chest oh, burster? Call it s- uh, Sephiroth. Yeah, I don't know, man. Hojo, <laughs> Hojo, <laughs> yeah, Hojo. Hojo's the face hugger. Yeah, he uh, hugged his face and sure, impregnated yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, the reason why he's feeling this, of course, is because his species has a five hundred to. 1,000 year lifespan and what I didn't know that I didn't either I knew he was older than he uh, okay. appeared because there was that scene with uh, Bugenhagen where he's like but but father or grandfather I am blah 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 years old and he's like yeah but you're just a kid in your okay. species timeline <laughs> so he then makes the like connection that he is apparently when it comes to humans he is only as mature as a sixteen as a year 16 old. Year old. <laughs> yeah. So that means if he's gonna live to five hundred years, then he's gonna be a hundred and sixty year old. So he's gonna have the personality of a hundred and sixty year old human, according to that line. Now, the personality of a hundred and sixty year old human is that of dust <laughs> on my shelf behind <laughs> us. <laughs> There is no personality there, so I thought that was an odd thing where it's like, well, you're 50, but you're really only 16 in human years. So if he lives half of his overall life expectancy... But his thing was like that his mind wasn't developed past that. Like he he didn't have the maturity of, a, of equal to more than a 16-year-old human. Yeah. Which, considering I just went through his thought process throughout this entire four-hour thing... Or however long it was, it felt like four. I guess it was like an hour, because I guess when it's depressing, it just feels longer. Um, this this entire like story, I I do think that he is older than sixteen in his mind. Yeah, I, with uh, with I just thought it was seven, an odd I, odd comparison. I didn't think he was. Uh, I, I didn't think he was that young. Like he did do some things, and he had weird daddy issues in the story, um, but it didn't come across as a kid necessarily. So. 
it's weird that he would have this uh this moment in this thing where he's like, no, I guess I'm only here and I can only be here. But uh, anyway, yeah, this is when we, this is when Nanaki finally sees the um, infected disease, the geostigma, the, the, stigma. the black ooze that seeps out of every pore and these people's yeah. bodies. First, video, I think he meets up with Yuffie first. He sees Yuffie, yeah. Um, and then... Then he hears a bear in the woods. Yeah, well, before this, this attacked. is when he, uh, he, <laughs> this is when we introduced the trans species idea. Oh, yeah, Final yeah, Fantasy, yeah, yeah. Okay, Final go ahead. Fantasy Universe, ahead because Nanaki, this. there's a line where Nanaki's like, I've always felt like a, I should have been a human, but I'm a fucking, a wolf man. So, like, he God. feels like he's in the wrong body. So, <laughs> Final Fantasy, this is a new page for Final Fantasy, as far as I know, where, we have our first trans species <laughs> character <laughs> with Nanaki. I can't wait till we get our first trans species president twice. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meowser. That'll be uh, <laughs> President Meowser. <laughs> <laughs> Meowser. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's only if you, like, rub his belly. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to be careful. If you piss him off too much, he'll nuke you. You can't play with him too much. Uh, you, you gotta, you gotta know his limits. Kitty can scratch. Yeah, kitty can, kitty can scratch. <laughs> uh, so yes, trans species. Just, um, oh my god! All right. There's a weird scene where he sees the faces of the people from Cosmo Canyon, and he can't really remember them. And then this is kind of where Nanaki finally sort of understands death. Um, where he realizes the finality of it all because he's super, he's going to live for fucking ever, but he just has this moment where he's like, wow, all of these people are going to totally die. Everybody going to die. And I'm going to still be here, and this is going to be shitty. It's like that moment when the, the elf lady in Lord of the Rings is like, he's going to die. Yeah. It's just is like it that like moment. that? It's just like that moment. Okay. Yeah. Only it's not like a love story, so it's... Yeah, rucksack like, says. My friends uh, are gonna go. So. He fits the sailor suit well. Exactly, that's proof. <laughs> he was. He is trapped in the wrong uh. body. Uh, so, and like we said earlier, Gilligan is the manifestation of fear of his friends' deaths. And as he's going through, he's going through a forest, and then he hears a gunshot, and he sees this boy who has shot a bear. Um, the bear is. Like, going to town on this kid. I'm thinking, like, Revenant-style gore <laughs> fest. The kid, like, goes off the cliff, you know, into the tree. That's and, a totally uh, <laughs> different part of the movie, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to escape. And then, uh, you know, it, the bear... Nanaki saves the boy, and then the bear gets shot by a hunter who happens to be the hunter's dad. Or the boy's dad. The, or the boy's dad, yeah, yeah, is the hunter. And the dad wants to capture Red 13. And this is where Red... The, it's like an awkward moment where he's like coming to terms with his his animalistic <laughs> then the, tendencies. Then Red 13 was like, it's okay. Yeah, he's like, it's okay, it's okay. to kill. And he, no, he was like... I'm trans species. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, don't capture me, all right? Yeah. All right? I'm trans. <laughs> Speak. Yeah. So, uh, this is going to be a little fucked up to catch uh, a sentient creature anyway. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so, oh, you want Oh, you really. You're a human in a. In a. Fire wolf's body? <laughs> yeah. In a red 13 body? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So uh, he, this is where he has this like outer. <laughs> Let me get these chains <laughs> off you. Yeah. Outer body experience where he realizes that everything needs to kill to eat. So this is where it kind of feels like one of those old school Godzilla movies where it's got the like fucking lame message at the end, and they're like, "Oh, it appears that everything needs to lame kill message. Come on. to eat. We uh, must only hunt okay. for food and not sport, for it is evil." Okay. Yeah. He so he has this philosophical. Um, revelation. The revelation in his head that there are there's a difference between monsters and hunters. Yeah, and monsters hunt to kill, whereas hunters hunt to feed. Yeah, and it's like, and, and, was, and then the the story just keeps. And going. he fucking <laughs> uses this to like justify the bear killing the kid later on. Like, there's another part where a bear attacks a kid, and he's like, "It is nature's way." And I'm like, "God, dude, I thought you were trans species. I thought you were a human." <laughs> What is it, Red? <laughs> huh? You can't tell me at one moment that you're a trans species being, and then later, oh, it's the rules of the forest. 
Your forest, your rules. <laughs> what is this? I don't. Does the does the boy die? Am I no? no all right. He, I didn't think. It, I didn't think he died. Okay, so <laughs> then all of a sudden these two cubs sort of like come along, and you find out that it was obviously the mama bear that got killed. Yeah, and the yeah. cubs are all alone, and then Red Thirteen sort of looks after him while he's just traveling in the forest. And one day he he hears far off the sound of a bear attacking someone. It turns out to be. The boy, the the hunter's son, it turns out to be the boy again, getting attacked by one of the bears, who has been named Bazu and Rin. Yeah, uh, Bazu is attacking Welcome. the kid. <laughs> yes, your patronage is appreciated. Uh, the the the, uh, the Bazu is attacking the uh, red, and red asks him to put his gun down or something. What the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's uh, okay. So before that, I wrote uh, Mom Naki. For when he was taking care of the, uh, oh, yeah. taking care of the baby bears. Mom Naki. Yeah, he grew really close to those guys. Teaches them how to hunt, and uh, I guess Nibel bear hunting is like the new fad in the region. So there's a lot of bears getting killed, mm. and um, so yeah, Bazu. He finds Bazu, one of the uh, one of the baby bears who's grown up by now. This is a year later. We find out trying to kill a boy, and the. Uh, this is where I, what I was saying earlier about like, oh, he is in the forest and it is now the rules of the forest. Therefore, the boy shall fend for his own. And I'm like, uh, okay, so I guess. And then I wrote down here, the first rule of the forest is that you don't talk about the forest. Because <laughs> it was this weird like cultish, he is in the forest now. I can no longer help. <laughs> it is the laws of uh, beast, no yeah. longer man. Um but the hunter doesn't give a shit. Yeah, and yeah. The, the dad finds the kid. Um, we get a weird scene with Elena, one of the Turks. Gilligan shows back up, and Red wakes up and uh, goes to the little village area because he hears some, some shit going on because the Bazu and Rin were attacking, and there they are, dead. Um, they're just dead. They have their tails cut off. Apparently, that's like the ivory tusks of the bear, the bear tail. I, I've never like the little puff of tail the bears <laughs> yeah. have. Yeah, they put it in their hats. You know, they just have a little poof ball. <laughs> okay, I don't even know if it's a poof. It's just like a like a gross tail. Uh, not right? yeah, it's yeah. Like a disgusting little uh, yeah. balled up tail. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So their tails are cut off, and then Nanaki. Uh, there's another weird scene where, like, I wrote down, it's just business, like, from Godfather. <laughs> he's like, it's just business. Yeah. It's business, nothing personal. And, uh, because that's kind of how the whole law of the forest thing is. Okay. But then this is where Nanaki just says fuck it to the whole law of the forest thing, and now he wants revenge. Right. So he considers, he thinks that Bazu actually tried to get revenge for the killing of his mother. Right. Uh, and then he made a statement like humans are the only, okay, I got it. Humans are the only species capable of such hatred. He believed that until yeah. possibly now. And my thing was like, I just read a book. Okay. All right. Uh, I listened to a book. I twice would like to put it. Yeah. Uh, I listened to a book called before the dawn, which is about human evolution and how they kind of figured it out via DNA and something that was interesting was that chimpanzees are the only other species that we know of that participate in the same type of warfare that we do. So instead of just, it's not just fighting, so it's it, warfare. So it should be Planet of the Chimps. So then. I was thinking in this universe, in, in, in FF7, um, obviously maybe Red 13 hasn't come across chimpanzees. Do chimpanzees ex exist? And how is human evolution, uh, how, did, how did it evolve in Final Fantasy VII? Also, where did Red 13 come from in, along that chain? I yeah. was, it was a question I had, and no one, of course, has the answers to. But it's not true. Chimpanzees, uh, chimpanzees do uh, participate in warfare. Nice. I, uh, and I thought, I thought that was really interesting, but... Um, Red 13 was like, how could this bear get revenge? I don't think a bear would get revenge, personally. I, yeah. I would say it's probably benign. I think the bear just didn't like the kid. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, the, kid, it's, the kid was dumb and provoked it. And also, why the fuck was he in the same forest for so long, Red 13, if he wanted to see the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he was here for a year, we find out. Um, so, yeah, he decides that he wants to kill a kid. And while he was doing that, Vincent shows up. Red gets blasted. 
Uh, I wrote down here, give red to the guns. Um, uh, that's a nude clan. <laughs> and then this Way is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Vincent's advice is basically get over it, but never forget. So never forget the experiences you did had. Did you just forget never that? Forget did to, we talk about Vincent like suddenly showing up? Yeah, I just said that. Okay, so he yeah. just shows up randomly. Um, Nanaki wants to go with Vincent. And I wrote up, wrote something here like you can change the. I, I said yeah, if you can change the future, you oh. don't change the past. <laughs> <laughs> so Vincent, that was basically Vincent's advice to him: is like you can't change the past, but you can change what you do with the past. He's not uh, in the thirteen universe, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there, it's Yet. like. Oh no! It's yeah, almost it's two years in the forest with the bears. My apologies. Wow. There's no cure for the geostigma, which of course we know. Um, all work. I wrote down all work and no play makes Gilligan a dull boy. And now the reason why I wrote this down is because <laughs> apparently the the geo stigma like gets worse uh, within you. The Gilligan, the like feeling of remorse gets worse the more time you have to think. So like when right. you're busy and yep. when you're working your yep, ass yep, yep. off, Gilligan is weak, right? The chest burster <laughs> can only <laughs> you have to have really high production value in your body. To really get that chest burster wonder belt <laughs> and ejected from your body, so like without uh, without hard work, the the feelings of pain and potential loss in the future, um, like double down basically is what is what I was getting out of that. It's like get busy and you'll forget that you have the geo. Yeah, it was that uh, Japanese work uh, ethic, right? Yeah, it does sound like it's some sort of ja- like uh, stereotypical Japanese work ethic. <laughs> Um, and Yuffie is a big fan of it. She's like, get some exercise. It'll make you feel better. Yeah. Yeah, get that runner's high, right? Yeah, get the runner's high. Um, and then, like, get some exercise. and make you, It won't make you feel as like you have so much Gilligan in you, and then maybe you won't feel like you have to be a trans species. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all mental health, right? <laughs> it's all mental health. Um, that's Vincent's take, yeah, that's of course. <laughs> Uh, Vincent kind of explains that Gilligan comes from the future, so it's weird that it's weird to me that Red named this feeling in the pit of his stomach, and he's able to he's like okay with talking to his friend about this feeling that he's fucking. Oh my named. god, dude! That's if like you having told a, me that you had something <laughs> called a Gilligan. Yeah, you're like, is that like a is that like a giant you pimple guys. on your ass or something? Like, what is All a right. Gilligan? Deep within my heart, Gilligan resides. Yeah. Like, like, what the fuck are you talking about, Caleb? Yeah, I, I, are it's you like, high? Yeah, dude. No, but Gilligan. How many beers have you had? <laughs> <laughs> there's this, there's this feeling in it. it it's really deep inside, and <laughs> it its name its name is Gilligan. <laughs> It doesn't want me to tell anyone about it, but he's in there. All that would happen for the other person would just be like a nod. <laughs> and like a glance to the door. Like, okay, okay. If I ran for the door, would he be able to Who stop should I right call now? right now? Do I need to sit here any longer? <laughs> yeah. So Vincent, uh, yeah. It's uncomfortable. Apparently Vincent is totally cool with that. And um, <laughs> he's got his own Gilligan. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> It's uh, you got your own Gilligan. You his, your uh, it's uh, what's her name? You gotta uh, take Gilligan to an island. <laughs> so you <laughs> call it Gilligan's Island. Yeah, I, I was thinking about making a reference, but I didn't. And then when, and then when you leave, up. he'll he'll have to stay there forever. <laughs> leave him there. He'll figure things out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, at radio. He has a lot of second thoughts about the children. Um, thinking of two the two bears. He talks to Vincent about it, but Vincent doesn't really f- care and like feel the same thing because Vincent, uh, Vincent's death, I wrote down here, the day that never comes, um, as we know, he is immortal, so he doesn't, he doesn't really fear death at all. So I guess he doesn't care about anybody well, else's either, me. except uh, <laughs> except his woman. Of course, that was yeah. pretty brutal for him, but you know, it was a long time ago, and he's steeled his heart since then. And then there's a, uh, a pretty comical bit at the very end where Red 13's like, dude, we should totally keep traveling together. We can be road dogs. Like, we can be an awesome duo and just do everything. And then Vincent's like, no, I don't, I don't think so. And uh, Vincent then tells him that he will visit Nanaki once a year 
because he's annoying. So he's like annoyed by Nanaki's presence. So he's like, once a year is fine, but any more than that, and I don't I'm gonna have talking to about your fucking Gilligan. I'm gonna have to smother you in your fucking Gilligan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's basically where this one ends. Um, I, I oh, and Red Thirteen laughs for the first time. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's uh, so we listen to. Uh, this might hurt you, um, our good friend at uh, good friends at livestream.net. But we listen to most of this at times two speed, and because Vincent's we had an episode. Laugh, yeah, we had an episode to do, and it, there, there's four parts to this thing. So. Uh, Vincent's laugh and Red Thirteen's laughs, they sounded insane on times two. It was like <laughs> I was like, What the fuck was that? And then it did it again, it was like <laughs> So uh they, they sound like sprinklers. <laughs> um but yeah, we do get some laughter and this one's this one's actually kinda light. I mean there's a lot of reflecting as far as Red Thirteen is Hunters concerned. Hunted. Yeah, and there's a lot of man. uh trans. Yeah, trans species. species um <laughs> Monster, uh, yeah, and it's it's kind of that whole idea of what he was saying earlier that only only men, only man kills for sport, but then he, because he feels like he's always been a man, he goes to try to kill for revenge, which is more <laughs> sportish than food. Um, so he kind of becomes that near the end. You think her. that uh, the reason he talks to Vincent is because Vincent is also a trans species? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Yes, probably. That's why he <laughs> wanted to hang out with him, but he was like, uh uh, no. I'm not one of those kind of trans species where I need another person. Um I don't know. It was uh I thought this one was good though. I, I think it's yeah, that was right. it's one of the stronger ones. I still think uh I don't know actually which one I like the most. Uh, uh, mm, I'm going with this one, I think. Yeah. Just for now, you know. It was it was a lot uh it was kind of like light and then dark at the same time, like the bears getting killed. It didn't was... have like 20 minutes of reflection before he goes off and does his thing. That's true. Yeah, there wasn't yeah, a lot of... Uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of him reflecting until after the events with the with right. the bear cubs dying and then him seeing like, once again, reminded of, uh, of his uh, fucking chest burster Gilligan <laughs> and the deep fear of everyone around him dying everyone he loves dying so i want to congratulate livestream.net uh for this particular episode for finding a, vo- a voice for red 13 that is better than the one in advent children yeah thank good you very job. much and not that that would have been too hard to pull off no but you definitely pulled it off <coughs> <coughs> he wasn't uh, talking about the stigma <laughs> too much yeah it's yeah stupid his voice for that red 13 it just comes out of nowhere too yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was crazy. So the other children, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking stupid. All right, well, uh, do we have any questions this week? We do, we do. I don't have them pulled up though. I d- <laughs> you said you had all your shit. You, know, you said you had all your pulled up. All but. Red has a voice in, in Advent Children. Yeah, he off has, pudding. He and has like two lines, I think. Yep, two lines. You know, someone co- gave a shit for that and told us that Red doesn't have lines. But he does. He yeah. definitely does. Because they, they told us we were morons <clears throat> because we were confusing Kate Sith's lines nope. for Red 13's. But not at all. Not, Kate not Sith a Scottish has, accent. Yeah, Kate Sith has that Scottish accent going on. The are uh, still children with the stigma. Yeah, that is that is <laughs> red. That, is, that his, is Red 13. It is a close-up on his face, and he is saying it. It's, I know. I've seen the movie about 60 fucking times. <laughs> It's, it's, and I make fun of that moment every time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's rough. Yeah. Um, Jesus, God! Why isn't it? Why aren't we recording right now? Just for that one person? I don't know. Well, you know, it's uh, we, <laughs> well, you we guys also gave me shit for uh, saying that Barrett t- <laughs> could take off his gun arm and have like a regular arm. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you stop that. We can be wrong. <laughs> okay, you can be wrong. I'm not wrong about this though. Red Thirteen has a fucking stupid voice. I'm never wrong. I think he says Just one line when. When they're like shooting cloud up into the air, I want to say red has another line there, but I'm not I, entirely I sure. I think so too. I think that's the only other time. I was something. very, very drunk the last time I watched that, so <laughs> so was I. <laughs> was that for the review? I didn't like no, no, didn't like the feeling afterwards with the nauseousness and the throwing up and never drinking, never drinking to drink again. 
Why not? <laughs> it's not cat Because soup. I'm not. I I, I swear, <laughs> dude. Okay, um, let me see. I got a one question here. That's playing my turns. I am. I am. Turn based. FF fifteen update. I don't know about this. Let me see. I'll just on something PlayStation Store. Y'all are really weird about us. Oh, no, maybe not. I do know his fucking stupid stigma line at the end with his fucking stupid and off. I don't know voice. if it's. Oh, no, it is near the end, isn't it? When they're on the airship. Fucking. Okay. Nah, it's the worst voice acting. It's, it's okay. It's probably not the voice actor's fault, but that voice with that face just does not work. It does not compute. It does not. Oh, and it's so out of nowhere too, because he never said he did like he doesn't say anything. He doesn't the say anything movie, the entire movie until the end. Until the end yeah, scene. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's suddenly like, "There are still others with this stigma." <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Stigma. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Stigma. <laughs> 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 All right, you ready for this? Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, now you can be ready for it. I am ready for it. Should I press it? Yeah. How about right? Probably forget the Twitter once. Someday. So we first up today playing Lightning Returns on Easy from Shinru. Just wanted to know if you oh, will you be mean playing the, the one who gave me shit for playing thirteen two on Easy. Yeah, just wanted to know uh. if you will be playing Lightning Returns on FF thirteen on Easy. Yes. Reason I ask <laughs> is because when the game was coming out, Square Enix suggested that everyone play it on Easy mode because the game's Easy mode is what Normal mode was on the previous games. Lightning Returns is supposed to be played two times and requires you beat it on New Game Plus to get the platinum and see other story stuff. Most players play it on easy, then do the new game plus on normal mode. You get to carry everything over, so yeah, I just wondered, since if you try to play on normal or hard mode on the first playthrough, you will get destroyed. Um, Alistair said he managed to get the normal ending on normal first, and only never playing the game again playthrough. But he struggled combat-wise on the fucking boss fights, but he thinks it just never really clicked with the battle system. And is completely doable, in his opinion. What? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Twice. Uh, yes, uh, I will be playing Lightning Returns on easy. What about you, Craig? What are you laughing about? Uh, Just something else. If I get to, uh, to Lightning Returns, I'll play it on normal. Okay. Is it a picture that he's getting? It's a fucking... Drew, ta- I thought Drew was still messaging me for the Kong Soul Island thing. I opened up my notifications. There was a very funny meme. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's that's what happened. And uh, me and Craig were trying to silently laugh. Ah, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, you almost had it. Uh, so you're gonna play it on easy then? Um, yeah, probably. Just if if that's the case, Shinro, I'm definitely gonna play it on easy. Uh, just because I want to get the game done and not be too frustrated with it. Uh, I know that this is uh, this is not news that some people like because some people are like hardcore. Fuck you. Um, but I'm a cash and I enjoy being a <laughs> cash and I shall stay a cash pretty much all my cash life. So yeah, I'm gonna play it on normal. And, oh, okay, uh, all right. I'll still try to platinum it. So all like right. I have gotten brutally fucked by uh, one of the ba- one of the bosses in the game though. So. I'm feeling the pain of the normal mode, I think. You I, got brutally fucked. This is a teen-rated game? Jesus Christ. I know. It's, <laughs> I don't know how that got through the sensors, really. Um, so we have one other one here. It's a question comment. New FF15 update from Hail Blue 156 We just barely had this guy on an episode of Nude Clan earlier today. That's awesome. Yesterday launched the new update for oh, the game. I didn't game. know Hail Blue was that guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. And some nice stuff for season pass holders. My question is, have you played them yet? And what are your thoughts on them? No and none. I really enjoyed the new sword that I got. It hits really hard when you warp strike. I also stumbled on something in the PlayStation Store. Do you all remember the pre-order bonus for getting it through different stores? Well, 
now you can buy those weapons and car decals for like 49 cents, oh. which in my mind makes pre-ordering kind of stupid. <laughs> if it's an exclusive item, don't make it something you can buy later. Now, this is yeah, something... You don't have the packaging that that uh, Troy got when he got those things. <laughs> yeah, this is something that I talked about upon release, and it was something I was kind of upset about, that they had these exclusive games, like the the Knight's Tale thing, or no, uh, King's Tale, mm -hmm. or fuck, whatever the one is. Like, yeah. One's a real game that they reference in the game, <laughs> and one's a fucking like, side-scroller beat-em-up that came along with the game, if you pre-ordered it from um, GameStop. GameStop. Mm -hmm. But I said, okay, if they make this a pre-order exclusive, there are going to be problems. Because it's a it's a it's like content. It's an extra little mini game. It only takes a couple hours to beat. It's not crazy, but it is something. And to have it as an exclusive thing for pre-ordering from GameStop, I had kind of a problem with. But I did say I bet they will re-release it all on the PlayStation Store later, and I hope they do that because I wasn't going. I wasn't. <laughs> Night's Tale is the movie with Heath Ledger. Thank you, yeah, Charles. That's, uh, yeah. It, <laughs> that's they, what I was thinking. I was like, isn't that a movie? And uh, uh, I, I, just, fuck, I can't, I I can't remember what that thing is called, but I, I was going to be mad if they King's didn't do Knight. that. Because, uh, King's Tale. King's Knight. Tale. King's Knight is one of the games. That's the game that you play on the uh, pinball machine thing. No, no, that's, that's just as uh, Monsters 5. Fuck! Oh, fuck. I'm way off. <laughs> just forget King's, what I'm talking about. King's Tale. That's Queen, what it King's is. King's Tale. Thank King's, you, Stolas. Uh, and I was going to be very upset if they didn't release this for the rest of us to consume. I mean, it seems kind of wrong to have pre-order bonuses that are locked forever, and you can just never play them unless you pre-ordered it from GameStop. We all know the truth. 13 times 3 is 60. <laughs> <laughs> 66 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's 66. So. All right. So it's it's King's Night, and uh, 13 times 3 is not 30. Whatever you said, 39. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think they. I think it's good to honor it and have it available on the PlayStation Store. What, what do you think about that, Craig? Like, do you think that it cheapens the pre order? Do you feel like it makes pre ordering dumb? Um. um <clears throat> no, I, I don't know because I I always expected them to uh, to release it later. Um, it's just something that they like every gaming company has always done. Like they they did something similar with uh, with Batman Ar uh, Arkham City, where the, each um, place that you pre ordered it from or bought it from had like a special skin for Batman that you could use. And the season pass uh, eventually got those when they were released, like a few months after the pre-order right, stuff, yeah. like had blown over. So I was pretty confident that this was gonna be everything was gonna be released. Yeah, and uh, I didn't expect King's Tale to be released for more than like five bucks, and it was released free. You so. mean King's Night? Uh, King's Tale. King. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm 100 percent sure. <laughs> Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. That's okay. a bold statement. That's right? new for you. No. <laughs> hey, what's anyway. 13 times 3? Say 66. 39. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I can see, I can see if it was like a... Actually, I, there's, no, there's nothing I can think of that I would be okay with, not okay with them doing, unless, of course, they had like... The two, the three hundred dollar collector edition, and they're like, you know what? We're just gonna do it for eighty bucks now because we have a bunch of these, and no one wants them. Oh, that would be that would be too much because that's like physical. physical I don't know if it would ever fall that low just because of how much the uh, the play arts things cost individually. Yeah, because like a Noctis by himself costs like a hundred bucks. <laughs> Oh, so, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I don't think that it would fall down that low. Probably not. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't mind it. Um, let's see what we got here. Gagezilla says, I haven't equipped the new sword yet. He has played the limited hunts a few times, and he filled his inventory up. Um, he's hoping we get some pretty awesome original monsters out of that soon. Steven on the forums replies with, It was nice to finally get my hands on Lightning Sword, even if it's completely useless now. He's also really enjoying the limited time hunts. The two posted so far have been unique and entertaining. I'll just have to remember that they're coming and not miss any. So that sounds like the new hunts are kind of fixing the big issue Joe and I had with the old hunts, where mm. most of them are 
really boring and you fight the monsters in the same exact spot that you fought the last batch of monsters in, but you can't accept them both at the same time. Now, that would be awesome to just have this fuck fest of monsters. <laughs> you just go in and there's like 40 monsters from like seven different hunts and you just oh, gotta battle. go. Did yeah, that'd be sweet. Do battle. a summon and then you kill them all. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. get like four, like four or five quests done at once. Yeah, that would be fucking <laughs> sweet. Oh my god, please. That would be so please. awesome. Please. <laughs> I would probably do it again if they had that. And <laughs> speed up mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need we need times three speed. We need uh <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a little video here. It's a twelve year old kid reacting to the FF seven Aerith death scene. Um let's Yeah, you know, fuck it. Let's let's do it. Okay. We'll, we'll look at this. How long is this video? I don't know yet. We'll we'll find out how much we want to look at it. I think it tells minutes. you uh, exactly where he finds out below the video. Oh really? Yeah. Happens at one thirty. Okay. Hey, do go go to like one twenty. All right, we're going All right, to so this twelve-year-old kid is just playing his game. He's yeah, he's just sitting there. He looks pretty uh, stunned. Really? <laughs> Please be still alive somehow. Oh, Will she boy. survive? Oh. <laughs> oh, she the did. Acceptance of death. <laughs> oh, spoilers, guys. That's a materia. <laughs> She's fucking dead, kid. Yeah, I wonder if this is like the original uh, <laughs> Red Wedding reaction video. <laughs> What? Dude, there was a... <laughs> That's kind of crazy that he didn't know that before going into that game. Why does Sephiroth have to be so crazy? <laughs> <laughs> For narrative purposes. Because he's the bad guy. Yeah, uh, we're going to have to explain to this child a uh, story. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, I... Uh, That's really cool. That's yeah, a, that is. Really I, cool. I saw I saw this girl who had never seen Star Wars and didn't know that Vader was Luke's father, and they had a video on her, and she was like, "What is bullshit?" And like, <laughs> she was like arguing with everybody in the room. Well, <laughs> it was actually her father. So that, that's a similar sort of thing. It's like we all know the thing. We all think everybody knows what's going to happen at the end yeah. of the stories, and it's like, oh, guess not. <laughs> Yeah. So that's pretty great. That's yeah, that's really great. cool. We don't uh buy I it was spoiled for me when I went in, I I think. I think I knew she was gonna die. I knew she was gonna die. Did you know too, Caleb? Yeah, it's yeah. And, like none of us get to experience what this child <laughs> has experienced, so he's he's more pure than all of us. Mm, there you go. In a way. Yeah, I mean he's still uh, twelve. Stola so. says the Brady Games guide ruined her death for me. <laughs> that's what you get for reading ahead, man. You're not supposed to cheat like that. Yeah, yeah. That's why. Why else would you buy a strategy guide? I. That's a good. It's point. a cheat guide. That's true. Um, to find items, not to discover you who know, dies. All of a sudden, it was like, why is Aerith not mentioned after this? Page? Yeah, you're like, oh <laughs> fuck. What do you mean she doesn't have an ending? Yada yada. Why can't you get all of her stuff on the first disc? <laughs> yeah, that seems kind of crazy, doesn't it? Oh my god. Uh we do have uh do you want to do our question from us to you or do the reviews first? Um let's do reviews first and leave questions from us to you at the end. We have a lot we of yeah. iTunes and uh Stitcher reviews. We do indeed. Because we're awesome. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. iTunes reviews. All right, first up on iTunes reviews today, these guys are awesome. A five star review from Rekka6512 on March 14th, 2017. Sweet. Reviews and news are well researched, <laughs> <laughs> and the hosts <laughs> are really entertaining. They present their views in a clear manner with examples and personal. Blah, anecdotes i like when the fat one comes on ha 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 love you caleb craig you're not fat thank oh. you I, spoiler. Love you. I love you too whoa 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 spoiler Rekka. he's totally <laughs> fat 
Uh, <laughs> I'm fat and I'm half his size. Yeah. That's how fat <laughs> yeah. Caleb is. He's a great guy, though. Wonderful guy. Great guy. Wonderful guy. The best. Yeah. The best fat third uh, occasional host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wonderful host. Wonderful best fatty fat McFat pants. Oh, now you're just being you like cruel. That? You like that? It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. So we have another Speaking one here. Speaking of too much, Caleb Craig's on the show today. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> I crack myself up. I yeah. bet you do. <laughs> Man, I can't believe you bought a fucking like, converter thing that's only... <laughs> they're not here. It. It's mono. I know they're not here. <laughs> okay. it. So we bought some new equipment for the show. Thank you to all of you patrons out there. You've uh, supported us and allowed us to buy so new equipment. You know, and we needed a little bit of a longer bit. cord for our little headphone jack don't thing. It. Oh, don't touch it. And <laughs> the, f- the cord that, that we bought... <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, I forgot. ...is a mono cord. But, you know, as, as everyone knows, if you have something that kind of doesn't work, you can sort of plug it in part way and it'll... It'll work, so we can get it in both ears, the sound in both ears, but only <laughs> in a very delicate position that's like that's like just the tip, right? It's just barely into this fucking thing. Just the tip. And so every time anybody touches the table, it's just like... <laughs> and it's... We, we I'm just, sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot that you needed... It's a quarter inch um, auxiliary cable. You need... Uh, it needs to be a stereo one instead of a guitar amp one, which is a mono one. Yeah, but because the headphone amplifier doesn't like it doesn't automatically like sub to mono. It it'll take in stereo. It'll only go to one he- one side of the headphone. Yeah. So it's like ah, oh, it's awesome because it's long enough to like where we all have our headphones on. We don't have to like scrunch into the table. But it uh, only works on one side. We have it plugged in all the way. So. Uh, we got a comment in the Twitch stream from Dr. Roxo. He says, you big meanies. And speaking of big, you are correct. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. It's okay, man. I can, I can get all the same fat jokes you can. Yeah, but so, uh, right. yeah. So another, that makes it okay. I know. Yeah, you're, clearly. Just, you're just reaching for stuff. You, it's you, not, you know, honestly, out. to get past you, you do have to reach a little bit. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, oh, that, that, that's that one fair. didn't work that well. Just keep, just keep going. So we have another five star review here from Seventh Circle on March fourteenth, twenty seventeen. Speaking of circles, Caleb is on the show today. <laughs> God, dude! <laughs> How many times are you gonna do that <laughs> until Caleb stops laughing at it? Uh, <laughs> this one's this one's titled "Great Show." I truly love this podcast. I also love Nude Clan as well. The show is full of humor, solid critiques of the FF series, and a terrific cast of endearing hosts, both permanent and guest. There you go. These guys are a window to a time when me and my closest buddies would sit around for hours discussing FF or Squaresoft. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, the talking dog, dude. (sighs) He's he's trans species. (laughs) Yeah. He's like a man trapped in a dog. <laughs> it's, dude, what the, what the fuck, man? Uh, uh, yeah, I solemnly vow to engage in the forums. I've been silent for too long, and I want to chime in on the fun. Come chime. Yeah. Chime, chime. <laughs> thank you guys for everything you do. Thank you, Seventh Circle, and thank you, uh, Rekka. Uh, we, uh, we have a couple more here to get through. This one's titled Get Just Through, you mean Read with Read with Passion. Read with and passion. Can I yeah. can I read one of these? Can you uh move it to the second monitor so that I could uh, check it out? Is yeah. Right? We I can, you but I'm gonna have do to that. sometimes they want to You're gonna fuck up my shit here, but <laughs> yeah, we can do it. I love fucking up your shit, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of big boy, <laughs> Caleb Craig is on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you only laugh when I say it. No, just like the, the <laughs> Joe's realization and the not saying it, and then you having to do it because he's <laughs> laughing. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Let me. Oh shit! Ah, uh, yeah. Here we go. Here shit we go. a little bit. Yeah. Fuck up my shit. Okay. <laughs> Stir it up. Just another great one. Thank you, Dylan Osborne. Yeah. Just Just another one of those great ones. Five stars. Stumbled upon this podcast late 2016 Uh, and and began at the beginning. That's good. Yeah. With the infamous 
Is it infamous already? Infamous we, yeah. FF1 episode. I can tell he's listened to other <laughs> ones because those are the ones that make it infamous. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> there's, well, there's two like, weird symbols that I don't... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes Podbay brings over like emojis as like fucking ancient Hebrew and shit. It's yeah, like no. it's like an ohm symbol it's over got here. Some hieroglyphics. Oi! Is what it looks uh, like. <laughs> so, uh, boy. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Of one episode. Oi! Yeah. <laughs> Since then, the hosts have cleaned up the audio sometimes. Yeah. They have blossomed. Oh, we blossomed twice into quite a fun, knowledgeable, and engaging podcast. As far as I can tell, from the extent of my knowledge. Well, you can't be gay, engaging and fun, only to <laughs> the extent of your knowledge. Is it fun and engaging? All right. Due to me having only hit the FF12 review episode, I'll catch up someday. Oh, he... You got a ways. Oh, he's like halfway through. Okay. Yeah. That all of a sudden makes sense. Thank yep. you very much. I only wish I had found this sooner because it would have been a blast playing through all the games with Joe and Caleb. Uh, I highly recommend this podcast to both FF veterans and newcomers. Keep up the good work, gentlemen, and enjoy the grind. And then the show ended. Yeah. Just right there. <laughs> just that. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, we got another one here from McWanta Bay. He says, great review episodes. Five stars. I happened, I happened to open this podcast. Okay, I happened to open this podcast looking for a talk about Final Fantasy XV and was delighted to see this podcast had individual re- retrospective episode reviews for each FF game. So I uh, started at episode one about the original FF have been and have been working my way through the rest of the review episodes. I'm enjoying every minute of it. I'm sure I'll be a steady listener by the time I reach the present episodes. Thank you for years of great work. I, ex- I, I get to experience them over just a few days. That is a crazy that thought, is isn't it? Yeah. Like the we've we've spent so much time doing this, and this guy is going to be caught up to where we are now <laughs> in a few days. Yeah. Although he is only doing the review yeah. episode, so he might not even ever hear this. Dun, 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 dun. It depends on how hardcore he goes. Yeah. So, Stitcher is another great site you guys can use to review us if you are anti Apple or iTunes. Um, Speaking of Apple shaped, yeah, Caleb Craig. Now he's just all right. All right. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So we have a, you gotta uh, do good ones if you're gonna fucking do it, okay? <laughs> We've got a, a five star review here from Lichen of Light. This guy, uh, he's a streamer actually. He rated the stream for the first time. It was really fun. Uh, it's a great Final Fantasy podcast. Five star review. After hunting down a way to write a review, because for some reason Google Play Music doesn't have a review section. Yeah, what? Come on, Android. Come on. And this uh, doo doo <laughs> show of a service makes it hard as doo doo to find the section to review anything. I am finally here to give my thoughts on the podcast. It is a fantastic show. I listen to it at work every time a new show is posted, other than the 15 review because I'm still playing through it. Sorry I spoiled that game for you, by the way. (laughs) He stopped by the stream for like 10 seconds and I said, like, what happens at the end? And he's like, whoa! (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) It's like, there it is! Have fun. Enjoy the 60-hour (laughs) build-up. (laughs) <laughs> to nothing. Oh my god! Yeah, it's when the planet blows up, right? Yeah. 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 If, if anybody is looking <laughs> for a hell of a spoiler, right there, yeah, it's uh, fucking massive. I, I was space not expecting creatures. it. Fuck, yeah. dude. If anybody is Little looking, green men. Yeah. If anybody is looking for a podcast that genuinely enjoys the series as much as we do, please give them a listen. Even when they say that FF13 isn't all that bad, come on, that game is hot dog doo doo smothered on Lucifer's. You know what? Lichen of light. Keep up the good work, Howl. P.S. had to retype the whole thing because of profanity. Aww, Ugh. So that's I'm why sorry. all the doo-doos and the you-know-whats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one is a a post from our friend, our good friend, Chris Jappert, oh, who was on a Godzilla podcast true, a little was, while ago. He was on a random Godzilla podcast. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> it's, it's titled Second Best Podcast... Ca- Second best. Second best Second podcast ever. Second best twice. I assume it's to Nude Clan. Uh, I've been listening to this podcast <laughs> recently, and now I'm eager to catch up on all the great material. Mm. The review recaps make me want to replay the old games again, and the special feature ones are interesting, funny, and make my work days a lot better. Can't recommend it enough. Would be my fave podcast, but that spot is claimed by the... Oh, what is that? Uh, the... Have you heard of this before, this show? This... What is it called? I, I can't. Considering he too is a large 
creature, a large <laughs> shambling beast. <laughs> I feel like I feel like if anyone has watched this, uh, listen to this podcast. <laughs> It well, would be. I do know Godzilla well. Oh, it's so. a Godzilla podcast. Uh, you see I, that twice? I haven't heard of the show. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though you're on it? Uh, <laughs> 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 on it. You know, I, uh, I, it was funny. I had just to, doing it in his sleep? <laughs> yeah, I had a wonderful interaction with Chris when I read this review, and I was like, second best, huh? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I did find Godzilla first, and I was like, well, I mean... I was the one that put Godzilla on Google Play. <laughs> and I was like, who's your god now? Well, well <laughs> Drew was the one who said we should put it on Google Play, but didn't know how to do it. Yeah, that's fair. And then I was like, so, oh, that's a good idea. Because, yeah, he's like, hey, they're doing podcasts now. And I was like, oh, okay. And then we did it. So, in uh, a way. In a way. Okay. So, the other show that you're not really on. That I'm going to be on that tomorrow. I am on. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh... <clears throat> According to Chris is is in fact superior to the show. I appreciate that, Chris. Yeah. Well, but has he listened? I to know where plan. his loyalty lies. I don't think he has. Well, I'll see. Mm. Once he listens to that, then he'll have to go back and edit it and be like fourth favorite <laughs> podcast of all time. <laughs> Super sexy nude clan. Oh, Ultima. <laughs> If anybody says Super Sexy is the best show out of the network, I will blow you twice. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, somebody's wow. gonna say that now. <laughs> yeah, the chat's gonna be like super sexy's the best times uh, ten. Wow. Uh, so last week we had a great question from us to you from Joe. It was should the Final Fantasy series continue with action based RPGs or should they uh, take it a step back and get more of the turn based <laughs> games? Uh, let's let's see what people's reply to that question from us to you. Are. Let's see what the answers from you to us are, is what that jingle should be this time. <laughs> Felicia Nomiko says, A few years ago, I would have said stick to ATB, but since I've played some action RPGs, I don't mind the action system so much. What I would really like to see would be a hybrid system or the ability to do either or. I liked having a lot of skills. I liked having a lot of skills, uh, spells, and summons to choose from. But I understand that some people don't enjoy that as much. I would really like to see a system that allows for both a setting or button that would allow you to pause the combat so you can make choices and then let the battle play out and pause it if you want to choose new actions. Or you could set the AI, gambits, and let them do their thing. 15's weak point battle-wise is that I have to control when my people heal, but I can't control what else they do, which is annoying. I shouldn't have to be the party healer when I am the main character. I should be able to set the action in a menu and just go so I get to actually participate in the action part of the RPG. I can't really see that doing a hybrid or flex battle system being that hard to implement these days. Fallout has VATS, with, which pauses the game so you can think. Dragon Age Inquisition has a mode that allows min minute control sorry, of all four characters and the ability to play as them at any given time, so it can be done. I think doing that would be a big innovation on Square's part and would finally allow both camps to live in peace. <sighs> don't, sorry about my uh, interruption there, Felicia. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> watch the YouTube. You'll understand. Uh, Silver Shade says, like a lot of you, I agree that it should be something of a mix. Something unique. A combination of the two. Beating a dead horse here, but... FF15's battle system was boring and too easy. It needs to have more strategy and or skill-based mechanics. I think action systems are fine. I love the games, the games mostly for their stories and visuals, and would work through a crappier play mechanic for story. However, if each game ends up having virtually the same action-based combat system, I might, just, might start to get bored with the series, especially if the stories continue to be lackluster or incomplete. <coughs> In summary, action turn-based or some combination of the two are all fine as long as it has interesting and challenging 
as long as it's interesting and challenging, but not broken or impossible. I uh, I do wonder what did, what do you think of fifteen really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he goes on to say, "Legend of Dragoon is fantastic, especially the addition system." Glad to see it getting some love. Yeah, that's an amazing game as far yeah, as Yeah, I haven't played it. Concerned. Need to play it someday. It's fucking, uh, it's good. I think we need to After new all planet. these goddamn RPGs are done. Yeah. For for New Clan. That'd be great. Oh, I have <laughs> three to Yeah, do, get so. another uh, yeah. 40 to 60 hour RPG in there. Yeah, so we're actually on the wrong page. Of the oh, that's fine. We thing. can go back. Um, Rasslin Mustang agrees. That we need to do it for New Clan? Yeah. That's good. Because uh, I honestly do think we need to nominate it at some point. Um, Raslin Massane says he's enjoying 15, but my heart is in the turn-based. Halister says, uh, what do you class 13s as? Hybrid. Hybrid. Definitely yeah. a hybrid. There is. Well, a- I think it's definitely an action or a, yeah, it's a command-based system, but it's so fast-paced that it doesn't feel so much like it's a command-based system. Um... He says, I think it's the best battle system in the series by far, besides 14, but it's not really uh, turn-based, but when I think action RPG, I don't think 13 either. Either way, if they want to do a game like this again, I I would like more depth. It feels much like a poor man's Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, Minus holding a button to auto-dodge, which is lame as hell. Then again, if we go back to turn-based, what do you mean? Because 7, 8, and 9's combat is pretty awful. Come on. Come on. Yeah, it's uh, but tactics was amazing, and outside of the Final Fantasy games, like Legend of Dragoon, were turn based and had s- strict still skill based combat. To answer the question, I think turn based has the most potential for strategy and depth. Without a gambit based system, uh, it's the only way to have the party's AI that isn't um, a steaming pile. So, I will say turn based. I like right. the gambit system. I wouldn't mind like something like that, like twelve. Yeah, like I mean, it's nice to thirteens is kind of like that as well. I guess it's like a yeah, you you have a well. you have an assignment that you give them, so it's like a hey, this is your job. You make sure this shit is taken care of. That's I do kind of like thirteens, and it does build off of twelves gambit system, um, and it's nice to be able to control your party's actions to some extent. I mean, when I was doing the uh, the Castle Rock Challenge Dungeon in fifteen. They, sometimes it would take him like 20 seconds to go res me. And like, I'm standing right next to fucking Ignis, but he doesn't care. He doesn't <laughs> care. He just doesn't want to help me up. And it's like, ah. I'm sorry. And so Do you need something. Yeah, it would be nice <laughs> if I could have a gambit where it's like, oh, he's Recipe. dying. Let's help him. Recipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, it'd be, it'd be nice Just to go back about to that recipes a bit. in battle. Shinra says, no one action based game. Oh, see. No. One action-based game every once in a while is fine to mix it up, but I think the series should stick to uh, turn-based. I really hope FF16 is more traditional with the turn-based battle system again. EOS team will not let us down, right? Hopefully he makes the, the next uh, the next game. Hopefully he makes another FF6, FF9 style game. It's been a while since we've had an Ito FF game. I know! That's what I'm thinking too, man. Ito should be in charge of 16. Yeah. But we'll see what happens within Square Enix because you never know. Rastlin says Tactics and Legend of Dragoon, both childhood favorites. Alistair says If you have shit reflexes, you deal shit damage and take way more. It really shows how lacking the PS1 FF games are in terms of combat. I think that's his uh... Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's, for, that's for the battle system in Legend of Dragoon. Mm. You have to be on top of that shit. Um, okay, Gage Zilla says, I think the series should continue to evolve its battle system as long as Square Enix learns from its past. For the most part, he feels that the battle systems have progressed through the series to keep up with hardware of the time. A true turn-based battle system wouldn't feel right for a mainline FF game because it would be a step backwards. Not saying that turn-based games are no longer fun or shouldn't continue to be made, but the main FF series should utilize the current systems to give a modern style of gameplay. Hopefully Square Enix looks at what has been successful and what hasn't and gives us something new each time. Because if I wanted to play the same game again, I will. I have no problem dusting off the classics. I just don't want to have to pay $60 to do it again. Hmm. Stola says he doesn't mind either, really. To be critical about this, for the most part, the RPG battle elements in main Final Fantasy series, with the exception of a few dungeons and bosses and super bosses, the first chunk of 10, 12's Gambit system, have been pretty shallow. 
Majority of the casts end up being uniform by the middle part of the playthroughs, and any character can easily one-shot in any average enemies. So I don't see the big difference in transitioning transitioning to an ARPG if the com- complaint is there isn't strategies in ARPGs. Maybe you're just holding on to nostalgia that you find having a group of characters take turns in assaulting a person, wild animal, demon, aesthetically pleasing. Yet he does think that Final Fantasy XV is a bad example of what a main title FFA RPG can look like just because you're only in control of Noctis. He thinks to make a sound judgment whether or not this should happen is when the first part of the FF7 remake is released. Nomura has hinted that there will be a significant difference on how the characters will play slash how they will be utilized using Barrett and Cloud's gameplay mm. as an example. Uh, L-Star doesn't like... 15's combat system, it looks like. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Not Alistair, but Slip Denies. Slip, slip Nizzle? Slip Nizzle. I'm yeah. sorry, Slip Nizzle. Um, uh, let's see. I say this time, time again, says Alistair, but the Gambit system solved party AI. And it should be standard uh, in some form for any action RPG with non-controllable party AI. Uh, I fucking hate the party in 15. Never mind, Alistair. I did agree that he hated the party system in 15. They're dog shit in moments where it actually counts. But in 12, your party is stupid. If your party is stupid, just mess with the gambits. Uh, granted, I'm a bit, um, a bit mixed on whether playing as a party member should auto-disable their gambits or not, but whatever. Um... I like the system in 12, I'll, I'll admit. I, I honestly think that 15 system, is, uh, that's my sec. I think my second favorite at the moment as far as battle systems in the series. To 13s? Uh, to 13s. Um, and it's, it was, it's an action system, and I really like it. And I thought the party AI was uh, pretty decent. I, I, you can't, the party AI can't be too good, or else the game won't be any sort of a challenge, which 15 was hardly a challenge, but, um, yeah. And since you're immortal the entire time, uh, almost, (laughs) there's no death. Like Uh, there is, if you're not playing in easy mode, what do you mean? Oh, Caleb. Yeah. I didn't play in easy mode. Uh, if you have fucking Phoenix downs, all you have to do is Phoenix down and you're alive again. Yeah. Okay. You don't completely die. It's well, not game the, over. The item system in fifteen is extremely broken. That's true. Yeah. You. There is no death. It, uh, there is. There is no death. There. There is death. <laughs> I've Great. died. I died one uh, time. I never died. Did you platinum the game? No. I didn't exactly. think so. That's why you haven't died yet. Because you didn't have to go down there with all the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the iron giants and oh. the then the nagas. I did that place. Which I always have to be careful when I'm saying The only thing I have Naga. A, yeah, Joe, <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe will say something else if he doesn't uh, really concentrate. Oh, on hey it. now, hey now. Ooh. This is more natural hey for him to say that. Uh, no, that's... Don't even start that shit. That's yeah, those, those, those fucking nagas down there, though. Like God. They're, they're crazy. <laughs> I know. They're, why do they call the creatures nagas? Uh, why not? <laughs> and when I look at it, I think naga. I, what I do? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I've been around uh, for a yeah, long you're time. You're right. You're right. It's just a tradition. Someone, uh, someone in the <laughs> Twitch chat one time said we should. <laughs> that's what we should call uh, <laughs> call the group. Like the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no no. Uh, they're no, like, no, no. We, should, we should do that in the no, Twitch no, no. chat. And I'm like, I agree, but no. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Jesus, that's. Wow. Uh, Half of the <laughs> fan base gone. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, half, let's see. Really? What did you... <laughs> no, not half. <laughs> uh, did you read Alistair's there? Is that what you got to? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Slip Nizzle says they should progress more with the action-based combat. They've done so much with ATB and turn-based. It's time for a new, fresh battle system with action. And they can make the game more fluid, as we've seen with 15. Action-based is the future for Square. Every FF game from now on will be action-based. People can remember the past, turn-based, but this new generation of gamers want the we games will rise! to keep <laughs> the attention, and action is the way to go. So he says, um, so I say this about the word, it goes the same with what Square is about to be doing with FF. Either progress with it or get left behind. That is, I think that's very true. Yeah. 
there's truth in that. I mean, otherwise you're just going to have the same fan base over and over again. I mean, has Pokemon's fan base gotten bigger or is it like stayed kind of the same the whole time? They've they've stayed true to themselves like very much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sun and Moon is probably their biggest departure from the normal stuff that yeah. they've done. But their productions aren't nearly the size as the Final Fantasy ones, are they? No. Yeah, I don't um, think so. Hale Blue says essentially the same thing. He thinks as a business standpoint, the company wouldn't be growing if it didn't innovate. It wouldn't be around. If they stuck to the original and never grew, the series would surely die out. He liked 15, so he always felt like it was missing something, um, some sort of a level where the player learns new abilities and earns amazing style limit breaks. You do do that a little bit, but... So he wants some of the elements, but he definitely thinks we can't go back to a turn-based battle system. And Not after 15? <laughs> not, not ever. What do you think, Craig? Uh, well, I think it doesn't even fucking matter, because... Uh, like I posted on the forums, uh, if uh, Square has created something that it, no two games are the same, every battle system changes, and I don't think it really matters what they choose to do for the next one, whether it's more of a a turn base or if it's more of a an like an action RPG. Um, as long as they make it like a unique experience, I don't think it'll matter at all what they do. So you're down with them changing. I don't care if they change or if they do, or if they go back to doing a, a, a turn-based style. It really doesn't matter to me. So you enjoy them both equally, and you don't yeah. find it detrimental for them to go back to the past. No, I think uh, I think a lot of the reasons why um, people go back to playing their fi- their favorite Final Fantasies, when, like whether it be like seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, whatever they want to play, is because they like a certain battle, uh, the battle system of that game, and I don't think that creating a turn-based style game now would be a a bad thing. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, there are series out there that are basically exclusively turn-based, right? Like, isn't that what Persona is? Aren't those all turn-based? Yeah. Yeah, they they've always been turn based, right? You have yeah, and the they first have one, one coming yeah. out at the end of the month, yeah, th- or yeah, persona, in the beginning of next month, Persona so. Five, right? I mean, the yeah. other option is that Square Enix decides to experiment more once again with Final Fantasy instead of trying to keep it in its mainstream level. Like they just decided to go retro all of a sudden, and maybe the games would cost half as much and <laughs> come out twice as often. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fair. Yeah, but then you know. You'd have a different type of product, I guess. It's true, you wouldn't yeah. Have you wouldn't have big budget game. You wouldn't have Final Fantasy as we've always when known. When you it. see FF15, I mean, you, you may see it as incomplete, but whatever's there is, you know that it was like a big thing. Yeah, they, they put a lot of money into it. I mean, it. playing Tales of Zestiria, like how much smaller of a game is that? It's a it may lot be like smaller. it may be a forty hour game, but like you can tell. The the amount of work that went into fifteen versus the amount of work that like went into Tales of or amount of money and and hours man hours that were that was put into this sort of game it's just it's so much more complex and huge yeah um in in many facets um so that's what you'd be losing I think plus you get a car I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> win win too. right so I yeah. don't know I think you'd be losing something with it losing its mainstream status and I think that's what they're afraid of losing if they go back to a turn-based system. But then again, is the name Final Fantasy enough to keep selling the games regardless of them being uh, turn-based I think or not? it is. If it's a mainline, yes. It is, yeah. If it's a mainline, yes. If not, I don't know. Lightning Returns didn't really sell that many copies. They're satisfied with the 13 trilogy. They they said they've sold enough that they're they view it as a success, the whole thing. But that and Spirits Within prove that Final Fantasy can't sell everything everywhere. But as long as it's a mainline Final Fantasy game, we know they're going to be putting enough, uh, a lot of effort into the battle system. They're going to be putting a decent amount of effort into the story. They're going to be putting a lot into the, the soundtrack, and it's going to be a very beautiful game. Yeah. That's just inherent with the mainline games. And I don't That's think what you're expecting that. as a... Final Fantasy fan. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. day that the amount of money that they put into making the game does not, <laughs> it doesn't get results, you know, that's the day when they're going to downsize Final Fantasy. Or, you know, they said, you know, at a certain point, if FF15 didn't sell enough, they'd pretty much be done with the series, at least for a while. Yeah. 
So luckily it did sell. It sold just as much as FF13 has that we know of. Right? Yeah, so far, yeah. So success. Unless yeah. they put out some sequels that do one third the amount of business each time they put it out. Uh, <laughs> I think they'll just go DLC now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll just be like, "Well, I don't think they should." I think I think the Thirteen trilogy. Although I like Thirteen too, um, it's not necessary though. At it's all. not necessary. Like, it really isn't. It's, just, it's a lot of fun though. It's like they after they did yeah. Thirteen, they were like, "Oh shit, I wish I would have done this with the battle system and like." What do, you, what do you think of two people and then like a beast <laughs> character? Like, fuck, we should have done that. Like, that's what 13.2 feels like. It's like the scrapbook of 13. Yeah. And they're like, all that shit that they said no, maybe not to, they like pieced it together and they were like, oh my God, we have something awesome here. And honestly, if they had come out with Lightning Returns faster, I think it would have sold better. Um, and maybe they didn't have to do it to be continued at the end of 13.2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was an issue. Um, I don't know, man. Of course, once they had 13.2, it's like we have to finish it. <laughs> there has to be a 13.3. Right. Because at the end, they just decided to, to be continue it. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if it was necessary to do that. I don't, I don't think that should have been how they should have judged 13's success. I think it should have just been on 13 itself, which, of course, sold very well. Yeah, it was a, copies. I think it, I think that makes it s- it sells higher than most of the other Final Fantasy games. It's the fourth highest selling Final Fantasy game was FF13. Yeah, it was a big deal. So I, I wouldn't call that Final Fantasy's on the decline. And if 14 is is bringing you in money every month, and 11 is the most successful one after years and years of bringing you in money every month, then uh, I don't see. I don't get it. I don't get it. I honestly like. There's part of me that wants that team that creates the FF games. They go okay. Let's not do any more spin-offs with these Final Fantasy games. Let's take this team and their job is to make a Final Fantasy every 3 years. <laughs> and that's like a su- it's like a sub company. You could call it SquareSoft. <laughs> so like uh, an all like what Call of Duty Fantasy. does where they have like three different a couple different teams and then every year they come out with one. I think it could work. I think you could do something like that. They would need Ito would as the flex worker specialized, and he, yeah. um we just Grind them into dust. No, we'll just keep doing work constantly. We'll keep doing Kitase and Ito till one of them retires or dies from yeah. fucking having to come out with a massive game every other year. Every three years. Yeah, every Final Fantasy years. twelve only sold six million. So I mean, thirteen. That's thirteen sold six point something. I want to say it was either six or seven. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we looked at this. Year There's ago, they're, so they're big. Might have changed, but they're uh, they're all they've all been very successful. And I mean, yeah. they have a good formula going. They switch it up and they. Adjust, and I don't think they overcorrect um, as far as the battle system goes. Uh, they do it to some extent, but it's never a bad battle system, even if they do overcorrect uh, with the gameplay of each entry. I don't think it's like a, you know, this one was so one way and this one's so the other way, and they're both bad or one of them's bad. It's, it's always enjoyable to some extent. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of dig... I dig the direction that they went with 15. And once again, there's like so many good things about 15. It's like take all the great things about 15 and put it into the next game. Because um, that, f- like the summoning, I, I, I don't know how much I can say about this. That's the perfect summoning system. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Final Fantasy games. I can't think of, there's no better summoning system. Hmm. Than 15? Than 15. Uh, in my opinion. I know how Not I would change it. Opinion. I know how I would change it. What, what tactics? I would do it sort of like because uh, it's kind of it feels kind of random for um, for fifteen. So well, it is for l- some of them. It yeah, actually it's is random. random. Yeah, yeah, I know. So it w- it would be better if there was like a, a kind of limit break kind of gauge thing that you could build up by attacking or getting hit, and then um, you could choose which one comes out. Yeah. Oh, you choose instead of it being it, which god. Yeah, you f- which god just f- randomly decides to help you. Um, yeah. I don't know. Cause, that cause would then, be interesting. I'm because not sure. then you could play against elemental resistances I, and things like that. I like so the idea more... that they were gods and that they came out when they said, and that when they did damage, it wasn't like Bahamut and FF5 where it was like, oh, I do just as much as my attacker. It was fucking wipe. Yeah. I know. I, I enjoy I, that too, but I would have preferred something to like build it up as well. Like it could be random. Also, I would just like uh, the ability to, because because he's he's uh, they made him worthy. So why not be able to be like, hey, I need your help. 
come fucking help me. Okay. That's right. fair. I would say give that system a try. Give your, your changed system a try. Uh, Rucksack says he likes FF12 summoning. Um, I really like the idea of it, but I didn't find myself using the it. The damage so. wasn't enough. Like, it, it, if you're going to have a summon, it's got to be worth it. It can't just be like, oh, today I'm going to do a summon. But that's kind of how the whole series is, though. They're not really worth it a lot of the times. Like, they're awesome for, like, five minutes and then they're Yeah, awesome when you're anymore. underleveled. Yeah, and then when <laughs> that's you... That's when they're awesome. And then when you get leveled up, you're like, that's not even worth the time it takes. I can do more than that with my hands. 13 like, was kind of interesting for summoning as well. Uh, dude, I only do. I used the one. Uh, I, I've only used it once so far, but it helped me out. In a boss it is. Fight, it is helpful. So. I used uh, when you start doing. I think it would be way better if the other two characters were in there too. Yeah. While you summoned it, when you do trap drops, if you try to go for the platinum, you will use the summon a lot. It helps uh, really stagger the shit out of uh, Adamantois when you're grinding, or no, Long Gooey. Sorry. When you're grinding the trapezohedron or whatever the hell it is from him. Mm. It's all the kneels, so you'll just see the one, and you'll hear her do a little scream over and over again, which is... <sighs> it's good. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, my question from us to you guys this week is... Should I suck it up and play Lightning Returns on easy for the Platinum... And then play it again on normal, because I'm going to have to play the game twice. Or should I keep my pride and continue my hour and a half in, or two hours in, on normal difficulty? You guys decide. You can't be trans difficulty. No, I can't. You can't um, decide you're just going to be easy one day and normal another. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> all right it's a fluid thing okay all right so guys go answer that uh, i think that's going to be it for today's episode at ultima final fantasy guys uh check out our other podcast nude clan it's a video game podcast you can check that out the godzilla podcast if you love old kaiju movies like i do or uh super sexy swinging fan fiction if you want to throw up in your mouth a little bit every week uh you can tweet me at joseph Vigolier. Me at Obsidian Bar. Me hey. at UFF Podcast. <laughs> you think you could just say your Twitter handle here? Oh, I fucking can. Okay. 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 All right. Um, guys, go to ultimafinalfantasy.com. If you want to support the show, there's a Patreon link there as well as an Amazon link to go and or yeah. uh, order uh, FF12 Remastered. Do it. You know you want it. We know you want it. Uh, Everyone knows you want it. <laughs> Just do it through Amazon. Yeah. If you're not, unless you're going to get the two hundred dollar edition, which sadly is only available on the Square Enix store. But okay. if you're going to do it, do it because it'll probably sell out. And what, what else can they do, Schweiss? They can uh, they can go to ultimafinalfantasy.com and join the forums. They can go to twitch.tv slash ultimafinalfantasy and follow us there and see the episodes live every Saturday, uh, most Saturdays, and facebook.com slash ultimafinalfantasy as well. Yeah. Oh, shit. We had a message from Darth Jama. It was a reply to our review. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we'll have to get to it next week. Don't we have an intro as well somewhere in the messages right now? Oh, shit. We totally do. I think we Tell do. Tell you what. We'll write a note, and then we'll try to remember to do it. All right. So. Thank you for the messages. 385-204-3921 if you want to leave a message that goes to a black hole. That's 385 <laughs> 204-3921. It doesn't go to a black hole. We've never not played a message that I know of. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's easy to say that I know of. We have not done that. You're right. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for for uh, joining us for this episode, and we will see you... Oh, shit. Uh, wrong one. In one week's time. <laughs> Enjoy the double intro grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final that Fantasy scared podcast. the shit out of me, by the, the way. The show was produced by Joseph DeGaulier and Caleb Schweiss, with music and editing by Joseph DeGaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes, as well as our Let's Plays, at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter, at UFF Podcast, as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show, and look forward to the next episode episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. Speaking of ultimate pods, <laughs> Caleb Craig was Caleb on the show Craig's today. On the show today. <laughs> yeah.
How long did it take you to think of that? I was like, there's got to be something in the ending. Hey, uh, Roxo, were you saying you want to play Zysteria, or were you play- saying you wanted to play something else earlier on? Because if you want to play Zysteria, dot, 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 could possibly loan it to you after we're done. The great Nude Clan game loaning uh, program. <laughs> or you could uh, donate to Patreon, possibly win my copy and uh, Nude Clan. Honestly, there's probably going to be two copies of that game in there, and then we're going to send Troy back one of his copies because there's he wants the. Edition. Yeah, he was like, if you guys are going to sell those, I I'm gonna sell. want you to send it back. And I, that's what I said. I was like, uh, we're going to give them away. I'm not going to sell a gift. That's weird. But regifting, it'll be a fruitcake game. Like, <laughs> I'll send it, and I'll be like, okay, now that you have this, you have to regift it when you're done. You can't keep it. <laughs> it has to, everyone has to play this oh, game. Oh, okay, Zelda. Well, I don't have that, so... He definitely said Zelda. I don't know where he pulled the Syria. Uh, I I, oh, I saw Zelda. Z. I see Zelda just now, but he said earlier, right after we mentioned Zysteria, oh. he's like, "Oh, I want to play some game," and I don't know if it was something in the chat. No, nah, I just saw the Z E and whatever Zysteria yeah. instead of Zelda. Um. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. I will see you again soon on the Final Fantasy Thirteen Two stream. Sweet. Until then, let's do it. Enjoy your night.